Welcome to northeastern Utah and the north flank of the Uinta Mountains here along Sheep Creek um, just near the Utah-Wyoming border looking at some of just the fantastic geology and scenery that exists up in this part of the world. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. You know, I stopped here because this is a really cool uh, exposure and view of a really neat feature that we find in geology. So let's see if we can walk our way through this and then I'll do a diagram here in a bit that explains it. We've got this beautiful valley down here with Sheep Creek at the bottom of it. On the far ridge we can see some rocks. It's very steep and craggy. Uh, and then I'm standing on a pretty steep slope here, the other side of the valley, uh, which kind of rises up and culminates along the skyline just behind me here. So let's see if we can piece together why this valley even exists in this location and what the um, underlying cause is. So what we have here is a very straight valley. Is it? You can see down here with the road towards the sun coming through here. This road along Sheep Creek runs in this valley runs nearly uh, not quite east-west, more northwest, southeast, but it's pretty straight and linear. And you can see the rocks here are sort of forming um, a fin, an obstacle, if you will, on the opposite side of the valley and sort of um, framing or hemming in this creek and this valley here. So this valley exists for structural reasons. Uh, if we come up here, we can see what the rocks are doing. In fact, let's just start with looking at the rocks across the way. Those buff colored rocks you see across the valley, that's the Navajo sandstone, one of the most iconic and well-known formations in southern Utah and in this part of Utah as well. This is the same sandstone that forms the big cliffs you see at Zion National Park. Here it's not quite as thick, a little bit different color, but it's the same Jurassic Age unit. These rocks formed in a big sweeping sand dune that existed from near nearly the Mexican border all, almost all the way up into Canada throughout the western interior during the Jurassic period. And then as we come over here to where I'm standing, we have uh, some rocks that are sort of sticking out of the ground. These reddish rocks here that form these fins like the one I'm seeing here. This is the Moenkopi Formation, a Triassic Age unit that formed in a tidal flat. There's a lot of mudstones, some fine-grained sandstones, some gypsum in places, and you can see the orientation of the rocks here with this big fin. The rocks are dipping to the right or to the north or northeast. Um, and so this is what we call our dip direction to the right here. But the direction that is um, perpendicular to that, the direction that this spine of rock runs in this direction, looking away from our view here, this is known in the strike direction. So when we talk about the orientation of rocks, we use terms like strike and dip. Dip is the direction that a water drop would flow moving down the slab. So that would be to our right, to the northeast. But the strike direction is gonna be perpendicular to that and more or less form uh, the direction we're seeing along this fin of rock here. So that would be more or less northwest moving away from us and coming back towards our view would be to the southeast. So this is the strike direction and this also coincides with the direction that the valley runs. The valley runs along the strike direction of these rocks here. So this is what's known as a strike valley. This valley exists because it's found a weakness, the stream has found a weakness in these rocks and exploited it along the direction of strike. And let's work through a little diagram here to see if we can make sense of this and put it all together in one big picture. Let um, me find a good spot to, to sit and work through this with you. So what we would have initially here is just deposition. And we'll just stick to four units. There's a lot more units in this part of Utah, but the four that are, uh, that are readily observed from this location, uh, the Park City Formation, which is Permian in age, the Moenkopi Formation, Triassic, the one that we're sitting on, the Chin Lee Formation, which is also Triassic, and then that Navajo Sandstone, which is Jurassic in age. And you can see all four of these here. Up on the skyline to the south is the Park City Formation, Sandstones, Limestones, the Moenkopi Formation right in front of us here, this very 
uh, brick red unit of sandstones and mudstones. The Chin Li Formation, we can't see. It's not exposed well, but it sits down here in the valley. And then finally, the Navajo sandstone there along the ridgeline. So the first part of our story is the deposition of these four rock layers um, during the Mesozoic. And then if we fast forward to about 70 to 40 million years ago, there was a period of uplift in mountain building called the Laramide orogeny. And that actually brought the Uinta Mountains up. We're on the north flank of the Uinta Mountains right now. The Uinta Mountains were raised. Uh, all the rocks that were sitting in this area were subsequently tilted. And there's more formations beneath them. I just put our four here just for simplicity. So now we can see our rock units tilted, dipping to the north or northeast, the Park City Formation, the Moenkopi, the Chinle, and the Navajo Sandstone. So the second event would be the tilting of the rocks. And then the final part of the story, the last chapter, would be erosion. So now we can see that these rocks have been eroded preferentially according to how resistant they are. The Navajo sandstone is a cliff forming unit. It's a hard sandstone. It forms ridges and cliffs like the one we saw across the valley. The Chin Li formation though, um, was originally volcanic ash. It has a lot of clay in it, uh, some soft mudstones, a little bit of sandstone, but it's a very weak unit. And so it's easily eroded uh, by streams and weathering processes. The Moenkopi formation isn't quite as hard as the Navajo, but it's much harder than the Chin Li formation. And then the Park City formation is resistant as well. So we have these two resistant layers on the outside. But this Chin Li formation being a weaker, softer unit has been exploited by Sheep Creek and Sheep Creek subsequently has carved a valley through the Chin Li formation along Strike. You might expect that if you have this uplift in the Uinta Mountains that the streams would just cut straight to the north making a beeline to lower elevation. But in some places like we have here, they actually flow parallel to the strike parallel to the way the units run across the landscape and this is what's known as a strike valley so really just a beautiful view here of a strike valley with these tilted rock layers here in the Moenkopi um, just a great example of this landform feature that is caused by and controlled by the structure of the rocks that underlie it so again park city formation the Moenkopi Formation, the Chin Li Formation has been completely eroded and forms the lush valley that stream, it's Sheep Creek flows through, and then our Navajo Sandstone there up along the ridgeline. So, little lesson for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me on this little adventure. Thanks for your support of the channel. There's a like button uh, that you can click. It's also, uh, if you'd like to donate, there's links under the video description. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.